Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to give you an update on my life. Now, we've had updates on Rob's life, which is good. And again, he was diagnosed with pre-diabetic, and he's waiting for his appointments to come up when it's time for a dietitian and podiatrist. And I'm not sure what a neurologist is, but once we know all that information, we'll let you know. This one is about me, and what's happened with me lately. Now, still doing my volunteer thing with the cat rescue. So that's been going well, but I'm going to start off with last year. Beginning of last year, uh, February, about a week after my aunt's birthday, she called the ambulance on herself. Now, we lived two hours away from her. She lived in my home shop. And she had been diagnosed with COPD. What we didn't know is a year before she was in the hospital the first time. We didn't know the truth then. We didn't know why she was really in the hospital until she went to her cardiologist appointment a year later, thereabouts. We found out the real reason she was in the hospital the first time. She had a blood clot. That's just how she was. You knew stuff and you didn't know other stuff. So, well, this last time, and she called name was on herself, she was the type of person who didn't want anyone to bother with her. Didn't want, you know, she didn't want to be a burden. And so, in the morning, she, she had gotten up, and uh, she didn't really sleep in her bed anymore because she was so swollen in her leg because of her heart. Well... And her COPD. There was a lot of other things about her and her medications. <laughs> we won't go into that part. But the reason she called out and with herself that day, she was having trouble breathing again. That happened, you know, of course, COPD. She was never put on oxygen. I don't know if that was an option for her or not. But the other thing was, she was a heavy smoker. She smoked for as long as I've been, probably and longer. And multiple times a day. I mean, the amount of cigarettes we found in her house. I mean, yeah. You knew it was a smoker's house as soon as you walked in. Let's put it that way. She could never quit. She cut down a lot, but she could never quit. So she had a hard time breathing that in. Her body wasn't able to do, able to get her the oxygen, and so it was filled with carbon dioxide. They finally fixed that. But afterwards, she was in the ICU. And we found out that the right side of her heart was damaged. Apparently, there's nothing you can do when the right side of your heart is damaged. If it's the left side, they can do something. Don't know why. So she was in the ICU. And then a little after that, we find out she is in full-blown kidney failure. And then her liver starts to fail. They say there's nothing we can do. Basically, she's dying. So they put her in the, you know, the whatever it's called there, the hospice version that's in the hospital and she was said they could intubate her but she would she would never come off so they, and they never intubated her so she was there and then about 2 a.m she passed away everything was failing so that was the first thing then we had to clean out her house which was kind of fun it's a little bit easier than my grandma's house because her house is split level her house is split level but her house my aunt's house is way smaller in my grandma's house but there's still a lot of stuff so we were going back and forth in that a lot so that was the first thing then a couple months later we get to november well actually before that my dad he had gone to the doctor and he had got recommended to go to a pulmonologist where he found out he had copd with emphysema and 30 percent lung capacity he was on an inhaler for a long time. He couldn't even take a shower without getting out of breath. So, that's the start. He would get in the car and he'd have to do his inhaler because he'd be out of breath before he goes somewhere. Well, <laughs> one day he was in his music room, in his apartment. And he went to grab a guitar and he turned the wrong way and he fractured a rib. And now me, I'm thinking, this is probably the same rib that he fractured 
many years ago when he was doing something else. <laughs> he uh, had been drinking, let's put it that way. He decided to ride his bike and he went down the road. This is rural Virginia. It was kind of like a hill. When he got to the bottom, he ended up crashing the bike and he fractured that rib. I think it's the same rib. So he was on the couch for a while. Muscle relaxers, everything. Finally, that was healing. I remember the phone call and he sounded almost 100% better. I was like, okay. He kept telling me he was going to get better. He looked up everything he could look up about COPD and everything. But he was at stage three. There's only four stages of COPD and he was at stage three. And there was nothing anybody could do. So, also, another thing we found out was that you have to have at least 40% lung capacity to be considered for a lung transplant. He had 30%, so he couldn't even get a lung transplant. Well, he was on the couch, and their couch kind of curves. So he had probably taken too many muscle relaxers or something. I don't know if he had any at that point, because he took a lot. <laughs> well, anyway, he rolled off the couch. And he couldn't even get up off the couch to go to the bathroom. He was on the couch for six weeks. And he rolled off the couch and hit the coffee table, the big wooden coffee table, on his other side. Not the side he broke the river on, but the other side. And he had run out of muscle relaxers. So he had to wait for the game refilled, and he couldn't do it. He said, call the ambulance. He was in pain. They took him to the hospital right up the street from their house. I'm going to tell you about Chesapeake Regional Hospital here. <laughs> I don't want to name drop, but, yeah. They had him in there as being alcoholic and on heroin. He never took heroin. That was my ability. And he hadn't had any alcohol for almost 10 years. And he had stopped smoking, which is why I say don't smoke, because he's too sore. So he's in the hospital. And, yeah, okay, well, he's not pneumonia, but he's in the critical hair at ICU type place. They should have kept him there, in my opinion, but they didn't. So it's a few days before um, Thanksgiving, we go there, and when he was a group here, he was actually more lucid. He was fine. The problem was, he hadn't had his regular medication for three days, and he was on antidepressant and anti-anxiety medication. You can't just stop that cold turkey. He started hallucinating a lot, and I think some of it was also due to the lack of oxygen, because his lungs just couldn't do it anymore. And his heart was working way too hard. And so, they said he had AFib at that point, which kind of makes sense, in a way. So they had moved him down to a regular room because they said his vitals were fine. He was hallucinating a lot more down there. We go home, back to the apartment that night, and about an hour or so later. Okay. <laughs> so, that was not what I was saying. And they had brought him down to the trailer room. He says, well, I was stable. He can go down. It's like, okay, that's good. He was supposed to come home the Friday after Thanksgiving. When he was in the trailer room, they finally realized he hadn't taken his regular medicine, so they gave it to him. Finally. Looked like he was going to sleep. He hadn't slept for like 24 hours. The anti-anxiety med he was on was what was helping him sleep. Finally gave it to him. Looked like he was going to sleep, so when he looked like he was asleep, we left. An hour or so later, we get a phone call. His heart has stopped, and we're doing CPR. I'm like, what? <laughs> what do you mean his heart stopped? He was going to sleep. Now we're thinking, because he was kind of like mine. He didn't want to be burdened. He was not going to live like that. He already had an auction machine at the apartment. He wasn't going to live in an auction and not be able to do anything, because that's not who he was. And so we're thinking he took his oxygen off his nose. He knew... He did that, his heart was stopped. Because he wasn't going to live like that. And there was nothing they can do. His stage was too far gone. Kind of like cancer. Anyway, so we get there, and you know those machines? They had one of those pump machines on there. They had one by hand, they had one of those machines on That's the first time I've seen that. Not on TV, but in person. Okay. <laughs> well... They get, they get him back. He was down for 30 minutes the whole time. They get him back, they lose him, and they finally get him back in. They got him on life support and they take him to the intensive care. So he was on that until Saturday. Morning, we get the call. Said, he's not going to make it through the day. Everything's failing. We have him maxed out on every medication. So we go down there. And he had to make the decision to take someone off life support. It is not easy at all. 
And when I tell you, he said his liver was failing, everything was failing. And when your liver fails and you turn yellow, you turn yellow. Believe me, I've seen it. The eyes were yellow, the skin was yellow, especially when they took them off everything. Yeah. I think now that yeah, they brought him back so we could say goodbye. The odd thing was, though, when he was on life support, they played a song that he had recorded. Oh, he cheats. He knew that was a song. His heart rate went up when we were playing it. He knew that was his song. He was kind of there, I guess. Well, took him off life support because he was maxed out on all the medications. They couldn't do anything more. He was not coming back. All his organs were failing. And so, that Saturday morning, 27th November last year, that passed away. And it just didn't seem real. It still kind of doesn't seem real. Um, all these months later. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> Our first father's day without him. His first birthday without him. You know. It's just wild. And then, <laughs> if that's not enough, we were supposed to, stepmother and I, Paula, we were supposed to go see Ringo Starr on June 21st. All of a sudden, well, it was almost that time, about like a week or so before, two of his bandmates had tested positive for COVID. Postponed the show until September 20th. So, at least it's postponed, and now we have a date, so we're still going to go on September 20th. So, it's only a few months. So, that's, <laughs> that's good. It's still good to go. Then, this past week, here comes my cat, Angel. She was 15. Hyperthyroid, high blood pressure, and at the very end had to take potassium twice a day and prednisone. For some reason, her potassium level went down. We didn't know why. We will never know why. I have a feeling it was probably some type of cancer, but whatever it was, it didn't show up. Because then all of a sudden after that, why she was on prednisone? Because her red blood cell count started to go down. We cut this stabilized for a long time. It was not the hyperthyroid. It wasn't even her heart. Her heart was good. <laughs> they might even call it, called her the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> anyway, at the end, it was like she was having many strokes. You could tell. I kind of think it started when she couldn't fully sit down, and I just didn't think of it. I thought it was just age and arthritis. The whole time, I thought it was just arthritis. She was going to get an anti-inflammatory, maybe some pain meds, and she'd be okay for a little while longer. No. When she was at the vet the first time, the vet tried to put her back paw down and it had folded underneath and she didn't even know the cat, Angel. She didn't even know her paw was folded for the back. There's something going on in her brain. Like I said, I feel like it had been some kind of cancer that just didn't show up. I guess we didn't. We could have done that kind of testing, but she was 15. <laughs> we didn't really feel like there was a point at that time. That's why we bring her home. She's on the couch. She hadn't, she had hardly eaten. She barely ate. So we knew it was, it was that time she was telling us that she wasn't going to eat anymore. She was picky anyway, so we weren't really sure at first because that's just how she always was, but she was barely eating even her dry food, which she always ate. I finally got her to eat some in a little bowl. She tried to get up and then her front paw mm -hmm. did that and she couldn't straighten it out for a few minutes. Finally, she got it straightened out. It was weird though because as soon as that was Whatever, I guess another mini stroke or whatever was going on. Once that was over, she completely like went to sleep and passed out. <laughs> you know, which I understand. She was only there on the couch. So after that, we were talking, and she was barely eating. We decided that we couldn't let her starve herself to death because she was telling us it's time. She could barely walk at that point. When she tried to sit down, especially on the kitchen floor, her back legs would start to slide out from underneath of her. So, past Thursday, 3.30 in the afternoon, took her to the vet, had her put to sleep. She was three pounds. She lost almost about a pound in two weeks. <laughs> and it wasn't her thyroid because that was... Her numbers were good. We had all that under control. Her heart was strong, so it had nothing to do with that. The only thing I think of was some kind of cancer that was affecting her brain at that point. So, that's strange. My whole life, ever since 
I was at least 10 years old, I've had a calico cat. I've had at least two cats, and now I only have one. So, it takes a little getting used to. But. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not been too fun for me lately. I want some fun so bad. <laughs> I want to go to the beach myself. You know? And actually hang out for a while. Actually put on a bathing suit and go in the water. <laughs> I haven't put on a bathing suit since I probably when I lived in Florida. Which is the last time I've actually been in the swimming pool. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of things I want to do. I just kind of tired of death. I know it's part of life, but it's just been a lot lately. <laughs> now I need a break. So, that's me. What do I do to cope? I kind of have to distract myself, you know, it, it comes and goes, but I play my games on my iPad, mostly Animal Crossing, Pocket Camp, and Mario Kart, and I also watch a lot of Star Wars. I put that on at night to help me relax and go to sleep, whatever reason it helps, but, you know, favorite shows, favorite games, favorite movies, you know, anything that will help you. I also tend to do something I probably shouldn't do, <laughs> but I've done that a lot, even after my dad passed away, I did it. I like to buy myself a little something to make me feel better, and I haven't done that yet, this time. You know, I like to go to Five Below, like my all-time favorite stores. And by the way, there's a new store that just opened up here. It's called Second and Charles. It's really cool. It's kind of like Books a Million, but they have a lot more stuff, and it's very nerdy. So... If you do any of that kind of stuff, you're going to like second in Charles. It's really, really cool. Anyway, I didn't want to go back there. But also, they're already bringing out the school supplies at my Walmart. <laughs> but right after everyone's back in school, they're going to take that down. And all the Halloween stuff's going to come out. And eventually, there's going to be videos on that. You know how much I love Halloween and Christmas. So, once that stuff starts happening, that'll be a lot of fun because I decorate like crazy. <laughs> I love to decorate for holidays. I love to bake for holidays. I know. Yeah, of course, get gift, gift give, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. That's all I know support so far. So, September 20th is the day that I will go see Ringo Starr, hopefully. <laughs> right now, it's looking good. That's the day they postponed it, too. So, we'll see. I might do a vlog. <laughs> That's a good possibility. Now, I, I'll do a little vlog. You know, I can't show the whole thing, of course, but I can show, like, the beginning and then, you know. I can probably do that. I can probably show, I don't know how, if, I'm not really sure where my seat is exactly, so we'll see. But, I'll try to do a little vlog while I'm there. So, that's that to look forward to. I wish there was more to look forward to. I do know that sometime in early fall, we're finally going to take my aunt's ashes to the mountains, which she wanted. So, we'll finally be able to do that. So, maybe we'll see some videos from that. We'll see. Because the mountains are really pretty that time of year. <laughs> and I haven't been there since I was three years old. So, that's that. That's me so far. Everything else is the same. So, it's really humid. <laughs> Middle of July. I still mow in the grass. I gotta do that soon. But yeah, those are the stories I wanted to tell you about. I thought I was finally ready to talk about it. So... Um, I hope you enjoyed, I guess, <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> understood, which is, and again, this is why I try, I say to people, don't smoke. Even though my dad hadn't smoked for almost six, seven years, he still got COPD. So, I have no idea. <laughs> but anyhow... <laughs> That's what's going on with me so far. I'll let you know any new, any other new things that come up later on. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I hope you like, comment, subscribe. And don't, click, don't forget to click that little bell icon so you know when next video is coming out. And thank you for watching.